everybody my name is mars you can call me mg if you would like and today is june 1st i've got my pride shirt on to celebrate the start of pride month but that's not all that's starting today today i am beginning a very fun reading vlog that is inspired by my D, &D character micah who is very queer like myself and it just felt like a great time to do this so Micah is a tiefling druid of the Circle of Spores, and I'm currently playing them in a game of Tomb of Annihilation, and we're actually streaming this game, and I will leave the link to the Blank Page Tavern where we're streaming that down in the description for you to check out if you're interested. Micah is such a fun character. Being a Circle of Spores druid, they are very focused on mushrooms and other fungusy things, and that's kind of the main inspiration for the books that I'll be reading in this vlog, but it's not the only inspiration. It also has to do with their character. So Micah has a background in archaeology and they're very interested in history and different cultures and things like that. They also have a skill in cartography and map making, which is just so fun and I'm very excited to use that in the game. So those are kind of the vibes I was going for. I picked out four books to fit those vibes that I'll be reading for this. I unfortunately don't own any of them physically so I can't hold them up for you but I will put the cover on screen as I talk about them. So I decided to go with what I feel would be the lightest and easiest of the four books to start off with. You know I've got a non-fiction, I've got some darker books in there, but we are going to start off with Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies which is a uh, fantasy romance. I think it just came out last year and it recently had a sequel come out or something along those lines and I don't really know much beyond that. I know that the main character Emily is a professor or something like that going off to study fairies in this other place and she doesn't really get along with the locals but then her like academic rival shows up and he's like a hit with everybody and it's like a grumpy sunshine romance but she's the grumpy one and he's the sunshine I don't really know any details though. I'm very excited to be getting into this. My friend Violet really enjoyed it and I trust her tastes, so I'm hoping that I enjoy it as well. So I'm going to get started reading that today and I will update you guys when I have something to update about. Good morning, friends. It is a little past 8.30 in the morning on the 2nd and I don't have any reading updates for you yet, except for the fact that I'm a few chapters in and really enjoying this book so far. I wanted to come and talk to you a little bit about D&D because I have a session to play at the top of the hour and I realized when I opened my character sheet that I used all my spell slots and I'm a little bit nervous about that. I don't think we're gonna have combat today and if we do it shouldn't be super hard. Fingers crossed anyways. But uh, if we do have combat, all Micah has is cantrips and a couple of wild shapes and also good old fashioned just bonking people with their quarterstaff. But uh, yeah, opening it up and remembering that I used all my spell slots last session, a little bit nerve wracking, but it's fine. I'm still so excited to play. So I just figured I'd come and talk to you about it because this whole vlog is themed after my character and I... We'll probably update you after I hit a- my cat's going crazy out there. I don't know if you heard that, but it sounded like one of them just ran into the wall. But I will update you on how the session goes, but I'll probably wait until after I hit a good stopping point in the book that I'm reading as well to give you kind of like a two-for-one update. So I will see you guys then. Okay, friends. It is about quarter to two in the afternoon, and I'm here with my update. First about D&D, it was a super fun session, as they've all been so far, I've had a great time playing with my friends. I had a deception check that I knew I would have to make at some point because of an action that my character did two or three sessions ago. No, it might have just been the last session actually. I don't know, they've been blending together since it's been so long, but um, my character did something, slipped up and, and lied, and I had to fix that, but the deception check went well, I passed, but then we uh, we had some stressful uh, moments because there was a character who really wants this map that our party has and we won't give it to him and he's used to getting what he wants and we kind of made 
an enemy out of him and his husband, and that's stressful to think of the implications, but I don't have to worry about that. We're playing again in two weeks, so I can stress and have it then. As for reading, uh, this book, Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, is written in the form of a journal, the main character Emily's journal, as she is on this expedition to this island off the coast of Norway where there's these fairies that they're calling the hidden ones that people don't know anything about because most people don't think that they actually exist but they're like different than other fairies they do exist Emily has met a couple of them and she's there she kind of gets off on the wrong foot with the locals because she reads as autistic to me like there's no doubt in my mind that if this were a real woman, like she's definitely getting an autism diagnosis, which I love. If you didn't know, I am autistic and I love reading autistic characters. It's one of my favorite things and I'm just obsessed. I love Emily so much. She's a great character and I'm having so much fun. Um, so she's not really understanding why she's getting off on the wrong foot with these villagers, but then her colleague slash rival who is also a professor but he is a tenured professor at this uh college in cambridge where she is not tenured but she's hoping to get um tenure here how many times are you gonna say the same word he shows up and he immediately wows the people with his charms up until something that was just revealed at the end of the last chapter i read i read all of the chunk that takes place in october i felt like that was a good stopping point to give you my first update so it feels kind of like act one really uh then there's november december and then a little bit in january and february so i'll probably lump those two together but aside from that i'll give you updates at the end of each month um anyway back to what i was saying her colleague uh his name is wendell bambley which is a hilarious name i really love the dynamic between the two of them it's so much fun and i'm just so excited to continue on with this book. I was a little bit nervous going into this because it sounds like something I would love and so I was like what if I end up not loving it and it just really disappoints me but that does not seem to be the case at least for this first section I'm having a great time so I am going to continue reading a little bit more today before I get on with writing during this evening. I have a project to edit and uh, I'm a little bit nervous about that because there has to be some major changes, so I'm kind of like putting that off a little bit, but it's fine because procrastinating means I get to read more. So I'm going to get back to that and I will see you after I read all of the November entries. Hello friends. First of all, I apologize for this horrible lighting. It is like 1030 at night, so it's pitch black outside and I have to have the overhead light on. Second of all, I apologize for how loud the fan is. I don't know how loud it's going to pick up on my phone's mic, but it's kind of loud to me right now. We're just going to roll with it because I've hit the midpoint of Emily Wilde and I gotta update you. I'm still obsessed with this book, you guys. We have had a declaration of love and it was everything to me. Oh my goodness. There's like teeny tiny little details that aren't exactly to my taste, which like Obviously, it's not like everything is going to line up perfectly. How rare does that happen? But like the big picture stuff is so much to what I love in my romances. I just, it's so good. We've had a lot of fairy intrigue going on and like adventures and sword fights fantastic things the magic is so good it reminds me of an enchantment of ravens i feel like the way the fairies are done in that book is similar to the way the fairies are done in this book which is great it's like a more classic take on the fair folk which don't get me wrong the like modern take on fairies is fine i just prefer this more historical drawing from it i guess you could say I keep forgetting that this book takes place in the early 1900s and then every now and then they'll drop something like um Wendell said something about the forest being in black and white like a movie and I was like oh right historical book this does not take place in the current day um yeah it's really good I'm 
really, really, really enjoying this. I texted my friend, whose name is Emily, by the way. I think I've mentioned her on my channel before. We've been friends for like pretty much our whole lives at this point. And uh, we've buddy read a couple books together. She's much more into romance than I am. But uh, I texted her, I'm like, girl, you need to get on this. You would love this book. And she's like, I'm already placing a hold on it at the library. I'm like, great. Um, but yeah, that is where I'm at with this book. So I have read up through November now. So then there's a chunk of chapters that take place in December. And there's a little bit of a time skip to the end of January, beginning of February. So I don't actually know. It's hard to tell on an ebook, especially because where I'm reading this ebook, it doesn't give you like a percentage of what you're at. I'm kind of just going off of the number of chapters I've read to, to guess them about halfway. But regardless, I've already told you where I'm going to give you my update. So I am going to pick up tomorrow with all of the things that happened to Emily and Wendell in December. I can't wait. I don't even care that I'm reading this completely out of season because this is totally a late autumn, early winter book. But here we are in June and I'm still having a fabulous time. I feel like I've read a lot of books lately that have taken place in the autumn. I don't know why. That's kind of just been an accident, but whatever. I'm going to get to bed because I am quite tired, but I will probably see you tomorrow with my next update if things go as they've been going. Well, I finished reading Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. I didn't expect to just yet, but it turns out when I thought I was about halfway through the book, I was more like two thirds because the chunk of chapters that take place in December were quite a bit shorter than the previous chapters, so I was later in the book than I thought I was. Um, yeah, I finished it. This book was so good. I'm like, it might be a 10 out of 10, it might be a 9 out of 10, I have to think on it a little bit more, but like, I loved this. It was fantastic, it was exactly what I needed in this moment, and I'm really glad that I read it for this vlog, because I feel like, while not super similar, I feel like Emily and my character Micah would be kindred souls of a sort, like, I feel like they would get along quite well, and I... I think it just was the fir perfect first book for this vlog. I will definitely be continuing on with the series. A part of me wants to read book two right now, but I'm not going to. I'm going to give it some time. And I know book three is coming out next year, so we've got more going. That's exciting. As for my next read, I have decided to go with the audiobook that I have on my TBR. And that is What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher, and this scares me for so many reasons, and none of those reasons are because it's a horror book. But this scares me because, one, it's an audiobook, and I am not the best with audiobooks when it's just that. I usually like to have it going while I read physically, but this is just going to be going as an audiobook, and I've done that before with some books, and I'm like working my way up to being an audiobook girly, but we're still very far away from hitting that designation, so I'm kind of nervous about that. Two, though, the fact that T. Kingfisher is like a second chance author to me kind of scares me. I tried to read their book, um, The Hollow Places, I think it was called. I was reading that I, sometime last year, maybe in the fall. I really don't remember, but I started it and got maybe a quarter of the way into it and ended up DNFing it because I did not like any of the characters. Uh, so it's kind of scary that I will be trying this author again because I've been told that I would like many of their books, but I'm just, what if I don't like any of them and then these people are disappointed that I didn't like them even though they recommended them to me. I don't know, but this one is one that I'm very excited about because it is a retelling of the fall of the house of usher which i have written my own retelling of the fall of the house of usher and i'm excited to see where those differences uh arise in what t king fisher has pulled out of the original story and what i have pulled out of the original story i know they're like zombies sort of in this book uh 
mushrooms I know play a huge part. There were a lot of like mentions of mushrooms in Emily Wilde, but it wasn't like a focus of the book. I know mushrooms, or at least I'm pretty sure mushrooms are more of a focus um, in What Moves the Dead. This is also part of a series, but it's only a duology. So if I like it, I can read the second book and not have another ongoing series, but we'll have to see. I do have quite a few chores to get through today. I've got like laundry to put away, dishes to wash, more boxes to unpack because I only moved a week ago so I have boxes all over the place. So I will definitely be welcoming the audiobook for those activities, but that will be later on today. I'm not getting to it right now. I have other stuff to do. So I will see you after I've started this audiobook and I could have a, an initial opinion on it. hot hot office to give you my update on what moves the dead i liked it i ended up listening to the whole thing in one go because it took me maybe like half of the audiobook time to put away the laundry i ended up listening to it at 2.5 speed and then i was going to unpack boxes but it was so incredibly hot that i kind of just laid in bed uh with my cat as you saw listening to the rest of it. I'm like, I can't get up and move. I need to just lay here for an hour or so. So that's what I did. And I enjoyed most of this book. I thought the beginning was really rough because it starts off with the first couple of chapters being full of such heavy handed foreshadowing. And then it also has this huge info dump on the world. And like, it was cool stuff that we were being told about. Um, we learned that the main character is non-binary, which I appreciate being non-binary myself, and also the, um, what is it called, narrator for the audiobook is non-binary, so that's pretty cool that they did that. Uh, but we learn about the country that this person comes from and the concept of sworn soldiers, which uh, is the name of the series, is the Sworn Soldier series, um, how soldiers are so revered that the language developed a separate pronoun for soldiers and there's also like different pronouns for children versus adults and this whole thing which i thought was very interesting but it was just kind of a fourth wall break really because the main character meets this guy who has never met a sworn soldier before and it's just like kind of inquisitive of it and the main character is basically like I'm going to assume that he was asking out of niceness and for you who have probably never met a sworn soldier I'll explain to you too how all of this works and then went on for like 10 minutes about it and I'm like okay I did not like that at all but I thought it was interesting how the mushrooms played into things the fungus because it's definitely in there that's the main reason why I picked this book for this vlog was the fungal aspect and I liked the retelling part. I was very interested in what was drawn from the original text of The Fall of the House of Usher. I thought that part was really well done. I'm not sure what would happen in the sequel because I did read like the first bit of the summary and it's about the main character going back to their home country and things happening. It's called What Feasts at Night, which is a sick name. I do love the names like What Moves the Dead and What Feasts at Night awesome titles but like I don't know what would happen and I'm not really super interested like I'm not for sure not gonna read it but I'm not also clamoring to read the second book you know so overall a pretty positive experience with reading and I guess tonight I'll start my next book because I do like to do a little bit of reading uh before bed so the Next book I'll be reading for this vlog is We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson, which I'm so excited to get to because I love the movie. I've seen it 
handful of times. It's probably one of my favorite movies. I think I would rank it in like the top 10, I guess. But um, yeah, that means I know the story and I know mushrooms are involved. It's very, like that's the only like little tenuous connection between that story and my D&D character, but I'm fine with that. I just kind of wanted a bit of an excuse to read this book because it's something I've been interested in doing ever since I first saw the movie several years ago, so I'm finally getting that chance. And like I said, I'm gonna start that tonight before bed and I will update you at some point in the future once I get into the swing of it. Good morning, friends. It is about 10.30 on the 4th, and I read a few chapters of We've Always Lived in the Castle last night and then a few more chapters this morning, so now I am halfway through, so I figured I'd give you an update. I'm really enjoying this read. The writing style is so interesting, and I love Maricat's point of view, which we do get that in the movie. The movie, at least so far, seems to have been a very faithful adaptation. There's not really a lot different. The main thing I would think is Jonas the cat. I don't remember being in the movie at all, or if he was, it was a much smaller role. Maricat brings him up quite a bit. Um, I realized I didn't really explain to you what this book was. If you have never heard of it, We Have Always Lived in the Castle is a gothic horror. It follows Mary Cat, which her name is Mary Catherine, but she goes by Mary Cat because that's what her sister calls her. And she has an older sister named Constance and her uncle Julian. The three of them live together in the Blackwood house and they're very separate from society and the rest of the people in town. And six years prior to the events of this book, there was this huge tragedy where the entire rest of their family, you know, their parents and Julian's wife, were all killed with arsenic poisoning at dinner and Constance was on trial for murder but she was acquitted and so that's kind of part of the tension between them and the townsfolk and their dynamic, the three of them who still live there, are just so strange and intricate and fascinating. Then the kind of inciting incident, I guess, is when their cousin Charles comes to town and things happen. I won't go into any more details because spoilers, but um, I just read the chapter where Charles has come to town, so I guess it's a little late for an inciting incident, but the setup and everything is so well done that I don't really mind. But like I said, I'm having a really good time and cannot wait to continue. And I'm back! It has been about six hours since I last saw you, and I have finished reading We Have Always Lived in the Castle. I picked a lot of short books, not only for this vlog, but just in general to read this month, so I feel like I'm flying through them. Anyway, uh, about the book, I have figured out one other difference between the book and the movie, and that is that in the book there's a brother mentioned, but he's one of the family members who died six years previously. I think they just cut that entirely for the film because he doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Um, but yeah, I adored this book. It was so good. Definitely on par with the movie. I feel like whenever I either read a book or watch a movie like that there's an adaptation going on there, whichever one I do first, I like better. So if I read the book first, I tend to like the book better. If I watch the movie first, I tend to like the movie better. In this case, I feel like they're pretty on par and I'm glad about that. So now we come to the last book of this vlog already, which feels crazy because it's only the fourth, but like I said, I'm flying through these books. The last book is a nonfiction book that kind of scares me. It's called The Way Through the Woods, and I cannot think of who wrote it right now, but I will put the cover on screen, of course. This is a nonfiction book about the author who lost their partner, I believe, and then through learning about mushrooms and studying mycology, kind of found a way to process that grief, which I think is fascinating. And it's in this vlog because it's about mushrooms, but also because grief and mourning is just a topic that's always fascinated me. I mean, I've had my fair share of it in my life because who hasn't gone through that sort of thing before? But also it's such a prevalent theme in my writing 
like pretty much every single one of my stories I've ever written has had grief as a main theme and a lot of my D&D characters as well. I'm not so certain that Micah fits the vibe for that, but it's got the mushrooms, so we're considering the connection to be there. And like I said, I'm a little bit scared about this one because A, it's nonfiction, and B, it's probably gonna make me really sad, but I'm still very excited to read this because I think it is such an intriguing topic. So I'm gonna get on that and I will update you guys whenever I have something to update you on. Hello friends, it is just past 10.15 in the morning on Friday the 7th. I haven't updated you in a few days for a couple of reasons. One, I've been reading this book, uh, The Way Through the Woods, a lot slower because it is nonfiction and I tend to kind of chill out with nonfiction and read it slower. And two, I haven't been feeling the best these past few days, so I've been reading less for that reason. I have been watching this YouTube channel that I think does fit the vibe of this vlog though, so I figured I'd mention it here. It's called Mini Minute Man, and he's apparently a very popular guy. He's got like almost 2 million subscribers, but I didn't know about him until like two days ago. But he's an archaeologist and posts a lot of archaeology videos, and I'm like, perfect. I loved watching it the past couple of days because it gets me still in the vibe of Micah and their archaeology stuff. So I'm like, I can, I can keep watching this and still feel like I'm being productive towards this vlog. So that's what I've been doing. But I have also hit the halfway point in The Way Through the Woods, and it's not quite what I expected. It feels like it was meant to be a, like, not like a textbook, but like a guidebook, sort of, to mushrooms and foraging in Norway, because that's where this person lives. Uh, her name is Long Lit Woon, and she's originally from Malaysia, but she moved to Norway when she was in her um, early 20s, I think, is when she said. She was like in college on an exchange program, met the man she would then marry, and they'd been together ever since, until his death um, 35 years after they got married. Um, so it, it's very much focused on that, with like sprinklings of the, you know, mourning and grief stuff put in there, and it kind of doesn't flow the best together. It does feel like there's these two separate things and that's like made all the more obvious by the fact that most of this is in black text, but then occasionally whenever she does talk about her husband Eolf, I think is how it's pronounced, um, and like the grief process, it's in green text, which is interesting. I don't hate that, but it also does make it feel like these are two separate subjects being talked about instead of like one thing coming together. Uh, there's also, this is so nitpicky, and it's probably translation error, or not even error, but like something to do with the translation because this was originally written in Norwegian and then translated into English, but she keeps referring to Eolf as her mate, and I know that it's just like, this was her husband for 35 years, like, I get why she would use that kind of word, but I guess fantasy books have kind of just ruined that word for me because it just makes me cringe every time I read it. But like it's very interesting, even though it's not exactly what I expected out of it. Like I said, I'm about halfway through, so I will probably take another three, four days, who knows, to finish it up and then come back and talk to you about it, but I am excited to see what else it has in store. Hello friends, it is 10.20 a.m. on June 10th. It's been a minute, but I have finally finished reading The Way Through the Woods on Mushrooms in Morning, and my thoughts are kind of the same as they were part way through. I'm sorry if the lighting is weird in this clip. The clouds keep covering the sun and I'm using natural lighting right now because oh, why not? It's the morning and the lighting comes in beautifully in this room. But like every now and then, like just then, it gets dimmer. So we're just gonna deal with it. Anyway, my thoughts on this book are pretty much the same as they were at the midpoint in that I would have loved for the mushroom part and the morning part to be more intertwined instead of just here's all this stuff about mushrooms and here's all this stuff about morning with maybe like one paragraph of why this mushroom part connects to this morning part. There were quite a few chapters that I felt like were so dense 
and definitely could have been cut down. Specifically, the like most egregious one, I think, in this is the one explaining the importance of learning the scientific names for mushrooms because, you know, you go to a different place, they might call it something else. And there was a section in that chapter on like why certain mushrooms are named certain ways and explained how like some mushrooms are named because of their color, some because of their smell, some because of their shape. And it's interesting stuff, but I don't think we needed literally a dozen examples for each thing. Like there were just way too many, could have been slimmed down a little bit, like give me three or four examples and I think we we're good to go. I really liked the chapter on food because it wasn't just talking about mushrooms, it was talking about like cuisine in general and this author, she's Malaysian, her husband's Norwegian and they kind of had like a mix of this in their household because of their differing backgrounds and she was talking about how after her husband died she didn't have to take him into account when grocery shopping anymore and how certain foods that weren't very common in their household before because he wasn't a fan of them she can now get more often because it's something she eats more and i thought that was very interesting there were recipes that i would love to have tried out but a i don't have the time or the money for that and b the way they were put in the book was very not helpful for making the recipes like they were explained in these like paragraph blocks of text sometimes there wasn't like specifics to it it would just say like these are your ingredients for the soup or whatever and that was it it wouldn't give you measurements or like how long to cook it for stuff like that and i'm like that's a shame i took a course in college that was all about food memoirs and we read i think five of them this was a while ago that i am trying to remember back to five or six and I remember in all of them, whenever they talked about the food, they would give a recipe, but they would have it written out the way you would in a recipe book. So like listing all of the ingredients and how long the prep time would take, and then like step by step how to make this. And I feel like if that had been in this book, it would have been great. I would have loved that, but it wasn't, so I'm a little bit sad. Overall though, I am glad that I read this. I think it fits the vibes of this vlog very well, but also I could read more nonfiction in my life. I don't do it often, maybe like two or three a year tops, and it's something that I would like to read more of, and I'm glad that I took that step here. I do have plans later on in the week, assuming the weather is nice, to go have a little walk through the park because I feel like that's very druidy and would be fitting for this and also I just need to get fresh air more often and walks through the city are not the same as walks through a park so if that happens I will include some nice b-roll footage at the end of this but besides that we have come to the end of this vlog I had a great time if you've enjoyed watching it be sure to give this video a big thumbs up you can subscribe to my channel for more content and that way I will see you guys in the next one bye everyone